Hello everyone, we have already discussed chromosomal aberration in the last video. This is the change in the structure of the chromosome. We also discussed that there are four types of the chromosomal aberration, deletion, duplication, inversion and translocation. Among them, deletion and duplication we have already discussed in detail. The link of the video is given in the description box. Today, we are going to discuss about inversion. So what is inversion? Sometimes two breaks occur in a chromosome and this break is followed by the rotation of the segment by 180 degree before rejoining. Suppose this is the chromosome and two breaks are taking place, one at this point and one at this point. This is the segment. This then rotates by 180 degree and then rejoins. Now what happens? The segment has the sequence EDC. Earlier it was CDE, now it is EDC. So here there is no change in the number of the genes. Here also it is 3, here also it is 3, but sequence of the segment is changed. The sequence of the segment is inverted. This is known as inversion. Now the types of inversion, there are two types of the inversion, paracentric and pericentric. First we will see paracentric. When both the breaks into the chromosome occur on the same side of the centromere and inverted segment is without the centromere. So if we see in this figure, both the breaks are taking place on one side of the centromere. Here in this case on the right side of the centromere and the inverted segment does not include the centromere. So it is without the centromere. This is known as paracentric inversion. Second is pericentric inversion. Inverted segment contains the centromere that is it involves one break on either side of the centromere. If we see this figure, this is the centromere one break is taking place on the left side of the centromere and the other on the right side of the centromere. So this segment which is inverted includes the centromere. This rotates by 180 degree and rejoins. Now the sequence is C, B, A, Q instead of Q, A, B, C and it is with centromere. This is known as pericentric inversion. Now let us see how the pairing and crossing over takes place between the normal chromosome and the chromosome containing the inverted segment. The normal pairing is disrupted and abnormal cytological configurations are produced. At time of pairing, the normal chromosome forms loop-like configuration to maximize pairing of homologous regions. This is the normal chromosome and this is the chromosome having the inverted segment. This is the inverted segment. It sequences DCB instead of BCD in the normal chromosome. So this normal chromosome after the duplication, it forms a loop-like structure so that there is the maximum pairing between the homologous chromosome. The other chromosome which has the inverted segment twists in the inverted region and this chromosome which has the inverted segment DCB instead of the BCD twists in such a way so that the maximum pairing takes place between the homologous chromosome. So after the pairing, the crossing over takes place between the homologous chromosome and we have seen that there are two types of the inversion, paracentric and pericentric and the product of the crossing over. In case of the paracentric and pericentric inversion is different. So we will discuss them one by one. So now let us see the pairing and crossing over in paracentric inversion. This is the normal chromosome. This is the chromosome with the inverted segment. This is the inverted segment. It has the sequence DCB instead of BCD. Then the duplication of this chromosome takes place and after that pairing and crossing over takes place. The normal chromosome 
loops out in order to maximize the pairing and the chromosome containing the inverted segment twists at the region where the inverted segment is present to maximize the pairing. Normal chromosome has the sequence BCD but in the inverted chromosome the segment has the sequence DCB so it twists so that the B pairs with B, C pairs with C and D pairs with D and after that this is the point at which the chiasmata is formed that is the region of the crossing over or the point of the crossing over. The crossing over takes place between the second and this fourth chromatid. So the crossover product will be A, B, then the cross goes this way C, D, A. So this it has one centromere at this point and one centromere at this point. To this centromere, this normal non-crossover chromatid is attached. And to this centromere, this non-crossover chromatid containing the inverted segment, which is the third chromatid it attached. So this crossover product forms a dicentric bridge to which one normal non-crossover chromatid and the non-crossover chromatid containing the inverted segment is attached. This is known as the dicentric bridge. And the other crossover product is H, G, F, E, D, C, B. This cross will go this way. B, E, F, G, H. 2 dash, 4 dash. So this, we will get this one. This is the second crossover product. But here it is without the centromere. So it is known as the acentric fragment. So consequently it gets lost because without the centromere, these cannot align itself or move. Now what happens to this centromere? Spindle fibers are attached and this also spindle fibers are attached. During the anaphase, the spindle fibers move towards the opposite direction this is pulled towards this direction and this is pulled towards this direction and due to the two pulling forces in the opposite direction in this dicentric bridge random breaks occur so during the segregation at the anaphase one this dicentric bridge is broken and what we get one of the fragment of the dicentric bridge and to its centromere non-crossover normal chromosome chromosome is attached and we get another fragment of the diacentric bridge and to its centromere non-crossover chromosome containing the inverted segment is attached this is the inverted segment so after the segregation during the second meiotic division we get one normal chromosome two chromatids which do not consist of all the gene sequences so these are known as the deletion products and one chromosome with the inverted segment which is known as the inversion product and it consists of all the genes so what we can say that products of crossing over in the paracentric inversion one chiasmata in the region of inversion results that is during the crossing over what we get the formation of an acentric chromatid lacking centromere and a dicentric chromatid connecting the two chromosome which is known as the dicentric bridge so as a result of crossing over we get the acentric fragment which is not viable and we get the dicentric bridge to which two non-crossover chromatids are attached therefore at the end of the meiosis products are two non-crossover chromatids one normal chromosome and one inversion product one acentric chromatid two deletion products this acentric chromatid and deletion product are inviable so at last what we get one normal chromosome and one inversion product which consists of all the gene sequences these are viable these we get the deletion products which are non-viable this acentric fragment is also non-viable now let us see pairing and crossing over in pericentric inversion this is the normal chromosome and this is the chromosome which has the inverted segment. The normal sequence of the segment is B, C, D, E and inverted segment has the sequence E, D, C, B and the inverted segment also includes the centromere. 
so it is known as pericentric inversion. Then the duplication of the chromosome and the homologous pairing takes place. So during the pairing, this normal chromosome loops out to maximize the pairing and this chromosome having the inverted sequence or segment. These twists in the region where the inverted segment is present so that B pairs with B, C pairs with C, D pairs with D and E pairs with E. And this maximizes the homologous pairing. Then the crossing over takes place. This chiasmata is formed. This is the point of crossing over. What is the product of crossing over after the segregation? So crossing over takes place between the chromatids second and fourth. We get one of the crossover products A, B, C, D. Then this cross goes this way E, A. A, B, C, D, E, A. This is one of the crossover product. So what is the second crossover product? G, F, E. This cross will go this way D, C, B, F, G. So G, F, E, D, C, B, F, G. First and third are the non-crossover product. This is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, which is normal chromosome. And second non-crossover product is A, E, D, C, B, F, G. So this is also the non-crossover product. It has the inverted segment E, D, C, B. So what are the product of the crossing over two non-crossover chromatids, one normal and one inversion chromosome? What we get two non-crossover chromatids. One is normal and the other is inversion chromosome. Two chromosomes which have duplication for certain genes and deficiency for the others. So these are the crossover product. These have some of the genes in the duplicated form and there is deficiency of the some genes. If we see here A, B, C, D, E, A. Here A is present in the duplication form. B, C, D, E is present but F and G is not present. If we see here G, F, E, D, C, B, F, G. G and F is present in the duplicated form. E, D, C, B is present but A is not present. And due to the deficiency of the genes, these are rarely viable. Now, what are the consequences of inversion? Effect of inversion are not so drastic as deletion and duplication because due to the inversion, number of the genes remain same. Only the sequence changes. Inversion effect phenotype because of position effect. What does this mean? If a gene is present at certain location of the chromosome, then it will show different action or express different phenotype. And if the position changes, it will not show the same action or express the same phenotype. So with the change in the position, Phenotypic expression or the action of the gene changes. This is known as position effect. And because of this inversion, the position of the gene changes. And hence, inversion affects the phenotype of the gene. Inversion lowers the recombination frequency within the inverted sequence. Hence, inversion tends to retain the original combination of genes. Now the significance of inversion. Inversion helps in the origin of new species. It also provides the proof for the occurrence of crossing over and also supports the view that only two of four chromatids undergo crossing over. This is all for today's video. In the next video, we will discuss about translocation. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.